Springs from uh, Indiana, the uh, Hoosier State Crossroads of America, where no one knows what time it is, actually. But uh, we do the best we can. We, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do a fairly brief presentation about Dowd Orchards. I don't consider that uh, we do anything too uh, unique, wonderful, or uh, unheard of where we are, um, but uh, perhaps there will be some interesting pictures and sites there, and uh, if you have any questions about what we're doing, we can address that. Uh, in any case, part of Indiana is uh, up around uh, Chicago, which we call the region, is uh, on Wisconsin time, which all of us agriculturists would rather be. The rest of us are on uh, uh, the same time as Bangor, Maine, or Miami Beach, or whatever, all those places we do business with. Uh, we actually have a, a fair amount of business with Chicago Whole Foods, which uh, uh, presents some difficulties because, as I say, nobody knows what time it is. <laughs> but anyway, we are uh, in north central Indiana, um, kind of equidistant, Lake Michigan up here, South Bend, Fort Wayne, Lafayette, where the great University of Purdue is, and uh, Indianapolis down here, so sort of equidistant. Uh, not uh, adjacent to any one large population center, a rural, down-to-earth uh, area with honest, hardworking, mostly interesting Hoosier people, uh, probably perhaps not that different than rural Wisconsin. Uh, we're pretty far out in the boondocks, and uh, we... I do have a, a map in the uh, sales room of where people pin where they came from, so I have some idea where we draw from, but uh, a lot of it's uh, pretty local, really. Uh, we have been, uh, I think at this point, either the first or second oldest um, orchard in Indiana, depending on what statistics you use. Uh, we do have a century farm program there, and uh, so we stress history quite a lot. And, uh, you know, try to ride some interesting facet of our operation. Uh, I should have gotten a larger, closer uh, blow-ups of these pictures on the wall, but I'll, uh, I'll just relay a little bit of history since it tends to be somewhat interesting at least. And uh, the faces perhaps don't matter as much. This was our patriarch. Came from uh, New York State in 1839. Uh, along with a lot of other settlers uh, after the native lands were stolen and given to the uh, Wabash Erie Canal. Uh, and the homesteaders, our understanding is, uh, were required to plant an orchard on their uh, new properties as one of the uh, stipulation of, of homesteading. His son, Brinson, was a multi-talented uh, uh, agriculturist who planted the first commercial orchard. He had five five kids who were all involved in one facet or another, and two of them continued the operation on. Uh, interestingly, the youngest of that set uh, died of a massive uh, stroke during the harvest season of 1946, I believe, which some of you can probably relate to. Uh, and the community came in and uh, finished the harvest that year to uh, try to bail them out. Uh, it was before my time slightly, but uh, we do have newspaper clippings and we honored the few surviving people from the school kids and things that came to help in that operation uh, just last fall. Uh, my grandfather set, uh, for totally unknown reasons, was married in September of 1914. I have no idea other than grandmother wasn't pregnant, but uh, Real poor timing on their part. Set up housekeeping in a tent to do the harvest uh, that season, and grandmother uh, helped cook for the crew so they don't make ladies like that anymore. Uh, they uh, made their first, uh, I assume it wasn't a fortune at that time, but their first economic uh, progress uh, packing Ben Davis variety in barrels and shipping to the East Coast from a railhead. So a little bit of history background. We at least have a state road going by the place. Uh, Miami County is a, uh, a county which is 
stable in population, not gaining or losing. We used to have a SAC base in that county, so we were in the crosshairs of uh, the missile threat. Uh, not so much anymore, I think, hopefully. Uh, numbers of these older trees have been replaced, but that was an aerial shot. Some of you older ones may remember my father, Lorne, who was uh, instrumental in uh, the early uh, IDFTA organization, propagated some of the first dwarfing trees in the U.S., and uh, a lot of spray residue on that. I don't know what the deal is there. Um, but um, continued the operation until uh, 1994 when we, my wife and I resumed uh, assumed uh, responsibility. Uh, she's back at the back, and if you didn't in indulge in our stealth tasting operation back there, uh, please feel free to do that. I think there's still plenty to go around. Also, some literature back there you should access. Uh, this gentleman who we were talking to was celebrating his 100th birthday at the time. He's a distant relative, but uh, looked really good, I think, for that. We should all do so well. Uh, in terms of trees, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the uh, cultural aspect. It's a constant situation of, uh, of uh, removal and renewal. and uh, we don't do anything too unusual other than grow a lot of varieties, as many as 50, for retail sale. Uh, I'm, this appears to be pre-pruning. I hope they look better than that in a few months, uh, a few weeks. But um, I pr rather prefer uh, semi-dwarf uh, Malling 7 type trees for a number of reasons. I realize some of the uh, drawbacks as well, but they do well f for us on our soils. Uh, we are heavily invested in uh, new MAIA material, and uh, that was part of the major reason which I want to get to here in some detail of doing this presentation is talk about MAIA and the new varieties listed. So those are all young trees of uh, MAIA developments, and most of them have not fruited to any degree yet, although we at least had some samples. And a few peaches, which are already dead, presumably. We were rooting for global warming to on a consistent basis, so at least we could have peaches most years. But uh, yeah, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And we have no uh, no lake effect to speak of where we are, other than some snow bands sometimes. But we don't get the uh, climatic tempering that you'd like. So uh, let's see the majors, main sales area. We have a complex of buildings which were cobbled around uh, a 1800s one-room schoolhouse, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and uh, we, my brother and I moved a couple of barns and reconstructed them uh, in the 1980s to uh, form that uh, facility and one of our Goals and hallmarks is large displays, massive displays of a lot of different varieties so people have a lot of choice and a certain amount of shock and awe when they come in and see all that fruit. Uh, we also try to uh, do as much as possible in the realm of uh, public uh, education and tasting and uh, Outreach for you know new knowledge of new varieties and uh, uh, the, the, if if there is a secret to uh, retailing where we are, it's that uh, people have to have a reason to drive there because you know you can go to any any store and get uh, common commercial varieties, but uh, not so much where we are. <coughs> so we try to have uh, when the health police will uh, leave us alone have. Uh, public uh, tasting, they seem to have a uh, set of guidelines that they're okay with, but uh, to my way of thinking, I guess it's actually somewhat what we're doing right now, pre-sliced and, and diced in approved facility and so forth, but uh, that's probably not as sanitary as some of the other ways that we have done it. And of course, if you're staffed with knowledgeable people, my niece in this case, uh, uh, it uh, goes very well with customers because everybody likes free samples and uh, 
some education as they taste. Uh, I suppose the, uh, other than uh, a large selection of varieties, the other thing we try to push and stress is cider, fresh cider production, and that's in many ways the backbone of the business. People will drive for good fresh cider. Uh, Indiana Society also has a contest, uh, which we've won a number of times, and I uh, uh, don't know the you know, whether there's any major secrets other than producing a, a really good blend and a really high quality product. Um, we have a old, inefficient, uh, slow, and uh, you know, uh, I guess it's, I think it's fully, uh, uh, what, what's the word, uh, legal. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to, comp compliant, isn't that it? I believe compliance, you're always supposed to be in compliance of, of something or other, but uh, you know, uh, certainly not the uh, mass uh, production thing that you see in commerce, but in, the, in any case, it makes a really good cider. And uh, we, my, one of my nephews uh, can lead a crew and make a thousand gallons a night, which is after work, which is uh, en enough for us. Uh, we do that one to two times a week depending on the season and whether we're doing any wholesaling. We do also provide some cider to uh, wineries. Uh, we have a UV cider, mach cider sure machine which we use most of the time. It's not required as a retail situation but uh, it does offer some advantages and we feel it um, doesn't affect the quality to any degree. It does uh, <coughs> provide somewhat uh, greater uh, shelf life. Uh, we have you pick pumpkins, that's a uh, major attraction and uh, we have, I try to, uh, to prepare as best we can to ramp up for those seven or eight golden weekends as I call them throughout the fall, hope for good weather. You're probably all in the same boat. Uh, try to uh, ramp up a serviceable, knowledgeable crew uh, from almost nothing during the summer and uh, take care of the customers, many of whom I think visit just once once or twice a year, but have to have their apple fix. And of course, on a beautiful, sunny, warm September day with a uh, weekend with apples flowing in and out and lots of activity and tours and everything going, it looks like heaven, but of course, uh, all of you probably realize it's not like that year round. I think I had some lady uh, accost me once during, when I was extremely busy parking people during an open house event that uh, she said, boy, you people are just getting filthy rich, aren't you? <laughs> or words to that effect, and I thought a moment and just walked away, but anyway, it looks like that occasionally. Uh, we do try to have local entertainment on the weekends, fall weekends. There's a community band nearby. We have actually, it's my niece on the drums and uh, our local dentist, Doc Musselman, uh, who is a multi-talented musician, has performed numbers of times with different groups and on his own, uh, who we try to get involved at least once a year. There's a Dixieland band from Peru nearby. Actually, Peru is calls themselves the circus capital of the world. I assume that Baraboo might dispute that, but uh, that seems, along with Sarasota, to be the three cities in the nation who go uh, hog wild on circus. But uh, there, were, there were circus winter quarters historically in Peru, Indiana, which is 10, some 10 miles from us. Everybody likes tractor tours universally attractive. And we try to do an open house usually the last weekend of uh, September in any given year uh, with vendors, tours, various events and good stuff going on. Let's see, go back. Uh, that's the only picture I've got that actually shows something of the old Port Royal Schoolhouse, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, you might catch a look at that since it's surrounded by everything else now. 
but that's how the uh, outfit started. We have a uh, tractor show, usually following open house. We have a some kind of Labor Day festivity. We have Cider Weekend. We have History Weekend. Uh, we have Variety Weekend when the largest selection is available, and we usually have something at Halloween. And of course, that's the Golden Weekends. Uh, this is Port Royal School, dating from 1883 which I think every township in at least our area of the Midwest had a, at least one, uh, one single uh, one-room school. And of course, consolidation happened throughout the rest of history. Uh, that was, let's see, oops. That was a school standing on its own, I think, soon after abandonment about 1910. That was the deed of uh, the property from my, from our forebearer, um, providing the land for the school, and this was some of the kids, including my grand, grandfather right there, uh, and his siblings who only had to walk a couple hundred yards to school. Let's see, and that was a graduation program from. Hard to read, I think, like 1903 or something like that. And so in, inside of that facility, which was the only building to retail from it originally, um, we provide, uh, we do like resale items, jams, jellies, popcorn, snacks, uh, caramel apples, pop, popcorn, etc. We'd like to do something more. Um, space is limited and then there's the health and safety situation. So uh, we're nothing if not antiquated and uh, and out of date, but then some people call it charming. So there's a certain ambiance. Uh, I think as we speak today on a winter winter weekday, we're on self serve. There's a money box on the counter with a sign, including a number to call if there's any questions, and you make your own change and leave. And it works quite well. Don't think we've never lost anything significant. And some people, you know. I, downright uh, appreciate it, enjoy it. But of, of course the traffic is pretty slow on State Road 19 today probably. Uh, I have a local honey producer that's getting more and more tenuous it seems like. We have traditionally done field trips. Uh, I think that uh, has been de-emphasized pretty significantly uh, in recent years, mostly because of the financial state of the schools and the fact there it's hard to scrape money together to do rural field, uh, field trips and uh, uh, the, the ones that do come are appreciative but uh, that was a different situation 12 15 years ago when lots of people lots of schools were doing it uh, staffing is uh, obviously critical as you probably are well aware uh, this is our uh, sales manager who was a regional rep for McDonald's uh, a uh, managed uh, you know oversaw a number of restaurants a very good uh, uh, background to do something like managing sales in an orchard but uh, we our labor pool is primarily uh, housewives and uh, retirees and part-timers and folks with kids in school and the kids themselves, and uh, that's uh, to for a year-round situation. We only have three or four employees that stick with it, pretty much. Uh, Felicia is one, but she wants she values her free time and doesn't want to be 100%, which is fine, except in the fall. In the fall, so, uh, probably almost every seemingly top student uh, who lived nearby from North Miami has worked at the orchard at some point in time and uh, seems like al almost everybody from the county that comes in uh, either worked there as a kid or a young adult or had some relative who did and they always you know tend to point that out we have had people let's see where was the gentleman from somebody that came back I think it was from Washington State last fall that talked about his early years working at the orchard and you know still remembered it Let's see. 
right there. I think so. We want to stop on those. Um, see, I don't know if I missed anything I was going to cover. I think I would take some questions, and we'll uh, you know reserve some time for the MAI material, which I really want to get into here, and uh, and give you some in-depth information there. So, any questions now? And we do not at this point. Um, we were talking about that to somebody in the room this morning, and uh, my other than the logistics of actually doing it, um, my impression is that a lot of the folks where we come from can consider that work, not recreation. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, you know, Dad, of course, Dad didn't want it, did not want anybody uh, messing around in his trees, and he would. Uh, cringe and uh, go apoplectic if someone was climbing a tree and breaking limbs so that was, you know there's there's downsides too no we do not uh, charge to get in um, we don't actually charge our vendors for open house either on that particular weekend because that is uh, connotates a uh, free situation and uh, the tra the wagon rides are free that weekend the uh, other times the gentleman uh, Jim on the tractor there uh, is a folksy local fellow that's worked with us for some time. His son lives in the orchard house, and uh, in that case, it's a free will offering, and it helps support his weekend. So we feel like we get, you know, more than enough uh, kick from the uh, enjoyable activities to make up for in sales. I would say about 60% of our total activity income is retail. Farm markets, we are open year-round, although to a lesser and greater degree, obviously. We do some off-site uh, farmers markets in Indianapolis primarily, who now has a pretty good system. That was not the case in the past. We actually drove to Chicago historically 20 years ago to do markets. And uh, the other 40% or so is various wholesale, varies year to year, but I mentioned hard cider material, uh, Whole Foods, some, uh, what else, some small lot re, uh, resale to other orchards or vendors who, uh, and, and also some schools. I should put in a plug. I don't know. Do you have farm to school up here? Yeah, activity going on. That's been a very hot item, I'd say. Uh, we had historically a great deal of trouble uh, finding the right person to d deal with to get fruit into local schools, and uh, it's become much more easy easy uh, in recent years. And the uh, extension people are out there to help facilitate that. So that's been a a very good thing. I hope it continues instead of eating uh, tater tots and uh, chicken nuggets or something. You know. Well. Uh, Management practices, we do uh, IPM to the best of our ability. We have some pretty good connections with Purdue, which is only an hour down the road. And uh, we have not tried to do anything strict, uh, organic, or along those lines. But uh, most people are satisfied with the IPM situation, and um, and we're pretty happy with that. We're uh, oh, certainly in the apple scab belt, as we all are, I guess. Uh, so scab and kyling moth is the two really big deals, uh, along with curculio early, and uh, best be on top of that. Of course, some of the uh, MAI material is uh, going to help along those lines, I think, at least with the disease from the disease standpoint.